الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ورنا وكتاب عمدة الأحكام للإمام الحافظ عبد الغني عبد الواحد المقدسي رحمه الله we've reached كتاب we've sorry we've reached باب الغسل من الجنابة باب الغسل من الجنابة and الغسل means الاغتسال is to wash and it means تعميم البدن بالماء للغسل it is to pour water and wash your whole body is called غسل that's what it means غسل means تعميم it is to place over your whole body and pour over the whole of your body her water that's what ghusl means um, then the sheikh is part and he says min al janaba from janaba janaba means lughatan linguistically it means al bu'd distance janaba means in the arabic language linguistically it means bu'd distance far um, but technically it means inzal al mani when a person um, releases or um, semen, in zalul mani, when mani comes out, semen comes out, this is called janaba. Why is so? What's the what is the connection between the linguistic and the technical meaning? Because we said the, the, the linguistic meaning means far. It means that the mani is far from the body now. It used to be inside the body. Sahih. The janaba. So It left the place it used to be in. And now it's somewhere very far. Uh -huh. And also, um, it, can also be, it can also mean that um, the reason why it's called Janaba technically is because the person is told to distance himself from Ibadat. Uh, he is told to distance himself from Ibadat, such as the Salah and anything other than it, uh, until he until he purifies himself. So maybe that's maybe why it might cause, call, be called janaba. Ikhwani, um, there are five reasons why a person has to do janaba. Five reasons. There are five reasons where, where, is a, where a person has to do, jan, uh, sorry, has to do ghusl. Sorry. There are five reasons why a person has to do ghusl, wash himself. The first one is khurujul mani. It's that the water, uh, mani comes out, semen comes out of the person. It doesn't matter whether he's alive, uh, whether he's awake or whether he's asleep. It doesn't matter whether fil yaqadha or fil nawm, whether he's sleeping. Uh, the second one is al-jima'ah. Sexual intercourse wa illam yanzil, even nothing, even if something doesn't come out. If the private part of the man and the private part of the woman, they both touch, then the person has to do an ghusl from that. As the messenger said, alayhi salatu salam, إِذَا جَلَسَ بَيْنَ شُعْبَيْهَا الْأَرْبَعَ if a man sits between a woman's two legs, ثُمَّ جَهَدَهَا He strives, فَقَدْ وَجَبَ الْغُسْلُ غُسْلُ becomes wajib on him, وَإِنْ لَمْ يُنْزِلْ Even if nothing comes out. Even if nothing comes out. Um, number two, uh, number three, sorry, is Islam al-Kafir. If a disbeliever takes Islam, he has to do ghusl. It's obligatory, wajib. It's not mustahab. It's wajib. And the reason is the hadith of Qais ibn Asim. Now the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he took Islam, he said, فَأَمَرَهُ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَنْ يَغْتَسِلَ بِمَاءٍ وَسِدْرٍ The Prophet told him to clean himself with water and sidr. We're going to talk about that when we come to Kitab al-Janab, Kitab al-Janazah, the Janazah and everything regarding it. Basically to clean himself properly with soap and clean himself. So it's obligatory for the disbeliever to say, why, where's the evidence that it's obligatory? The Prophet ordered me. And you know all of you, Usul al-Fiqh, the ulama they say al amru taqtadi al wujubi ma lam yati qareenan tusarrif an al wujubi ila al najm if the prophet orders something it shows obligation unless there comes another text that diverts that command into it being highly recommended or something does that make sense so the prophet ordered me means that it's obligatory okay unless you bring another evidence to say no it wasn't then it remains wajib <coughs> so number 4 is inqita' al hayd wa al nifas the menstrual cycle comes to an end, the woman has to clean himself, clean herself. Ah. And, and the evidence for that is 
ده حديث ايه عائشه رضي الله تعالى عنها قال لفاطمه بنت ابي جحش the prophet uh, the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said اذا اقبلت الحيض فدع الصلاه if your menstrual cycle comes to you then leave this prayer ها uh, واذا ادبرت and if she and if your menstrual cycle leaves ha فاغتسلي pray uh, have a bath فاغتسلي have a ghusl ها uh, and then what وصلي and pray okay and pray now you might ask yourself okay but where is the where is the nifas the hayd okay that's the evidence for it where is the nifas ijma is with the nifas the nifas that is it takes the ruling of the hayd is bi ijma'iha lil ilm the consent of the scholars that it takes the same ruling and the last one is yawm al jum'ah friday it's obligatory for the person to do ghusl every friday wajib um, because the prophet sallallahu alaihi said in the hadith ghusl al jum'ati wajib ala kulli muhtalib the prophet sallallahu alaihi said the have the 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 fast the sorry the f- bath on friday the prophet said it's wajib it's obligatory the prophet used the word wajib he said wajib ala kulli muhtalib on everybody who's reached age of is it obligatory on the woman yeah is it obligatory on the woman we'll say that the jumah is not even wajib on her how is the ghusl going to be wajib on her the pillars of so we, w- the things that we need to do ghusl from are those five, correct? What are the pillars of ghusl? Two. Two things. The first one is an niyyah, intention. Ah. There has to be a difference between the normal ghusl that you have every morning when you wake up, you know, just clean yourself, and, and what? This ghusl, which is, a, which is a ibadah. There has to be a difference between the two. The second one is ta'bibu al-badari bil the water has to cover every part of your body. That's the second pillar. That water has to be on everywhere. Fa'ida, benefit. La yajibu naqdu la yajibu al-mar'ah. It is not obligatory on the woman naqdu sha'riha. It is not obligatory on the woman to open her plaits. Huh? Huh? When, she, when the ghusl is from what? Sexual intercourse. If it's from janabah, if a woman plaits her hair, huh, and uh, she's had sexual intercourse with her husband, she doesn't have to do what? She doesn't have to open her hair. Because remember that pillar only applies when? When it's hayd and nifas for her. And the reason why we say, why he said that is first of all the evidence, la shak, the hadith of Umm Salama. And the second one is, the second one is, the, um, the, uh, the second one is, goes against the the qawa'id al-shari'a qawa'id al-kubra the general uh, maximum uh, maxim sorry uh, jurisprudence ruling which is al-mashaqqa uh, tajrib it will be hard on the woman to always just clean herself to open her plaits because sexual intercourse occurs more frequent than the hayd occurs the hayd is once a month so on un- opening uh, like unplatting is easy I'm plating, I'm plating, I'm plating, I'm plating, it's easy. But for her to, after sexual intercourse, every time she has unplatted, it brings mashaqqa, it's hardship on her. It's hardship on, on her. And inshallah, when we talk about the way to do the sifat al-ghusl, we will mention that. Also, what is permissible, brothers, we have to remember is that it is permissible huh, for the man and the woman to both have ghusl together. It is permissible. Some people think that no. Uh, the two are married and both of them to have a in one place. Both of them are allowed to look at each other's aura without any exceptions. Not those who say that the woman's aura cannot be looked at, her private part, her husband can't look at it. That is a weak uh, point. The evidence for that is Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, which will come, inshallah, we'll see, is Kuntu Aghtasilu, which will come to us, inshallah. I used to do ghusl. And clean myself and our Rasulullah, me and the Messenger, from one place. Uh, we were both, we had Janaba. We both had Janaba. Um, the other one, inshallah, is the Ghusl, which is Mustahab. The Ghusl, which are Mustahab, uh, brother, uh, brothers, is eight. Eight times it's Mustahab to do Ghusl. Uh, the first one is Al Ikhtisal. To do ghusl, huh? 
after uh, after intimacy. Are you with me? Some of you might think to yourself, well, that's wajib, we thought that was wajib. It means if the man wants to do it again. He doesn't have to. He can have intimacy if he's got more than one wife, for instance, and he has intimacy with his wife, and then he goes and he has intimacy with the other wife, and the other wife, and the other wife. Or even one wife, he has it once, he finishes it, goes again, and goes on going. It's mustahab that he has a bath between each one. Does that make sense? But if he chooses to do all after when he finishes everything, he says, I'm going to do once, that's the obligatory one. Wadah. But in between, so al ghuslu ghusl in between jama' and jima' is highly recommended. Highly recommended. What's the evidence for that? Is the hadith of the Prophet uh, Abi Rafi, he said, Nabi One day the Prophet, he basically went around all his wives. And then had intimacy with them, and then he, he, he has a bath here. And then he goes to the next one, and there's a bath there. And he goes to the next one, and he has a bath there. And he goes to the next one, and he does it, everyone in, in the, individually. And they asked him, alayhi salatu salam, uh, he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Ala taj'al why do you just clean yourself once? Uh, why do you just do all at once after you finished? The Messenger of Allah said, Hada azka, that's more pure, wa atyab wa athar. This is more pure. More. And that's good for the man if he's married to more than one wife, not to go with the other wife with that kind of odor and that smell. It's not pure. It's not clean. And also what is being, I've seen that scientifically is also proven in Islam, and Alhamdulillah mentioned before is, when the man reaches that type of, uh, his body reaches that heat, if he has a bath, it is easy for him to go on a, uh, and that's why wudu is highly recommended as well. Wudu, just the person to, to cool himself down. Naam. So it's mustahab. Two, al-ightisal al-mustahadati li kulli salatin. The second one is the woman who has istihada. Istihada is the woman who's got continuous blood. It's nothing to do with hayd. This is not menstrual cycle. It just, she just bleeds consistently. She consistently. It's recommended that she does ghusl every, every salah, to every, for every prayer. It's highly recommended. Uh, it's not obligatory. She doesn't have to. But it's recommended. Purity. She's going to stand in front of Allah. Ta'ala. So before every prayer, she cleans herself. She goes. She prays. Uh, that woman. But when it comes to the wudu, we're going to mention the aqwal of the scholars that some believe that she has to do wudu every every prayer. The third one is al-ikhtisalu id al Having a bath after you fainted. It's highly recommended as well. When you faint and you lose your conscious, uh, it's highly recommended for the person to do ghusl as well. Um, number four, al-ikhtisalu min dafni al-mushrik. Um, the fourth one is having a bath after burying, burying a poly, a pagan, a disbeliever, a mushrik. And that is the evidence of the Prophet said about Ali bin Abi Talib. He came to the Prophet when he buried his father Abu Talib. Ali, he said, idhab for wari. The Prophet said to Ali, go and bury your dad. And then he done it, he came back. The Messenger said, فَلَمَّا وَارَيْتُهُ وَرَجَعْتُ when I buried my father and I came back to the messenger, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said to me, Ightasil, clean yourself, have a bath. Now this Amr of Ali bin Abi Talib, there are other adillas, other evidences that removed it from that Amr and made it mustahab, which we're going to come across inshallah. Five, Al-Ightisal lil Eidayli wa Yawm Arafah. To have a bath on the, the Eid, yeah? Eid and the day of Arafah. The day of Arafah, the people of Hajj to do it, even if you're not even at Hajj to do it. It's recommended. <laughs> Number six is Al Ghusl, uh, to do Ghusl. Um, ghusl of the day, or uh, sorry, Al Ghusl, Min Ghusl al Mayyit, after washing a dead. You, wash, you have a bath after you've cleaned an, a dead person. The Prophet said, Man Ghassal al Mayyitan fal Yaktasil. Anyone who washes a dead, he should have, he should, uh, he should, he should have a bath. Other evidences have removed it. Adilla, that have removed it, will come to it, inshallah. Um, the seventh one is, Al-Ghusl al-Ihram, or Al-Umrat, or Al-Hajj. When you're doing Umrah and Hajj, and you're at the Miqat, 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 before you put your clothes, your Ihram clothes on, it's recommended that you do Ghusl. For Hajj or Umrah. 
you do, you do, you have a bath. Eighth, which is the, the last one, is al ghuslu li dukhuli Makkah. When you enter in Makkah to do ghusl. Just before you enter the hudud of haram, even if you did come from the miqat and you've had a bath, but when you meet Makkah, before you enter Makkah, you go and you stop. And now in Saudi Arabia, there's a place called Tana'im. Tana'im, which is Masjid Aisha, built. It's on the hudud al-haram. It's hudud al-haram. So when you come for the miqat, for example, if you're coming from Medina, the miqat that you've just passed from in Medina is called the Hulayfa. That's the miqat in Medina. So you've had a bath, you've cleaned yourself, you put your haram on. So your five hours or four hours, is four or five hours drive, um, um, on the road, you're doing your talbiyah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. You're doing talbiyah. So you're not chatting on the phone or texting or uh, some people do. If you're driving yourself or if you're on a coach, whatever it is, you're just doing your dhikr while you're getting there. Okay? By the time you reach Mecca, just before you enter, you're going to come to the, the shed, the, the, the road that you're taking. Huh? They call it Tariq uh, al-Sari'ah. Uh, uh, the motorway you're on, it will come to Mist and uh, Hudud al Haram. So it will tell you, you know, you've now entered the borders of Haram. Just before you see that sign, Masjid Aisha, which is very big, well built, you t I think you find it on your left side. Yeah, on your left side. It's on your left. And that place is called Tana'im. You just go there, you have another bath again. And then five minutes later, you're going into the Hadd al Haram. You go into the Haram and you've cleaned yourself. So just before you enter, those eight. Are also what? The mustahabbat. Highly recommended. How to do it? We're going to mention it in the class, inshallah, bin nilai kareem. Al hadith al thamin wal ishroon. So now we have an overview and over of this topic. Now we're going to go into hadiths and extract all the benefits that are, that are in it. Okay? Al hadith al thamin wal ishroon. The 28th hadith. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لقيه في بعض طرق المدينة وهو جنب قال فنخنسنت So what does your, what does your نسخة say? What does your, your one say? فنخنست ها نعم ها فنخنست منه فذهبت فاغتسلت ثم جئت فقال أين كنت يا أبا هريرة قال كنت جنبا فكريت أن أجالسك وأنا على غير طهارة فقال لي سبحان الله إن المؤمن إن المؤمن لا ينجس أبو هريرة إن هذا حديث هذا حديث كريت باي بخاري المسلم بخاري نريت هذا حديث كتاب الغسل he narrated it only إمام المسلم on the other hand he narrated this حديث كتابه كتاب الطهارة he narrated in كتابه الطهارة The biography of Abu Huraira, we took his tarjama, his biography, when we were on the second hadith. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Huraira said, um, An Abu Huraira, Anna nabiyya laqiyahu fi ba'di turuq al-madina. The Prophet met, the Prophet met at Abu Huraira in one of the, some of the roads of Medina. The Prophet saw him, alayhi wa sallam. Wa huwa junubun. Abu Huraira was in a state of what? Janaba. So the Prophet met him, alayhi salatu salam, they met. So what did the Prophet salam do? He said, when he saw the Prophet salatu he said, فَنْخَنَسْتُ مِنْهُ فَنْخَنَسْتُ مِنْهُ خَنَسْتُ مِنْهُ is I slightly pulled back from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi salam. He pulled back. Um, and he left him, alayhi salatu salam. And it means that the Prophet was holding his hand. The Prophet was holding his hand. And this is, to, this is to show you that the, the purity and the fitrah of those people. You know, a man holding another man's hand because there was nothing evil at that time like that. They need to fear and worry. But now in a society like that, if a man even grabs your shoulder, like, what does he want from me? Why is he grabbing my shoulder for? Huh? If he looks at you more than required, then there's something wrong. Because uh, the people have that, the, the, what the society is like is very evil. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala and he said, when the Prophet grabbed my hand, this is the best creator, best man who ever walked on this earth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, I'm in a state of impurity. I'm, and he's got my hand. So he said, I slowly got my hand out of his hand. Hayy. And so what did I do? He said, I left him. 
فذهبت فاغتسلت I went I had a bath clean myself ثم جئت I then back came back to him فقال the prophet said to me أين كنت يا أبا هرير أبا هرير where were you and then he said to him قال كنت جنبا or messenger of Allah I was in a state of جنابة the messenger said to him and he said he carried on said فكريت I disliked أن أجالسك وأنا على غير طهارة I didn't like the idea of sitting with you and I'm not on purity then the messenger said Subhanallah exalted is Allah in al mu'min la yanjus Subhanallah exalted is Allah the, belu- the believer never becomes impure Subhanallah is tanzih is to exalt Allah to purify him subhanahu wa ta'ala an kulli ma la yaliqu bi jalali anything that does not befit his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is ta'ajjub min i'tiqadi abi hurairah al-najasta min al-janaba the prophet is amazed that abu hurairah thinks of this uh, he believes this this of himself that he's an impure individual due to the impurity that had fallen on him. Now, ثق الحديث استحباب الطهارة عند مجالسة العلماء والجلوس في حلق العلم احترابا وتكريبا وتوقيرا لهم وللعلم الذي يلقى عليه يلقى عليهم. It's recommended. استحباب that it's recommended to be upon purity when sitting with the people of knowledge. First benefit that we take from the hadith is what. Uh, that is recommended. What is recommended? That we are on purity when sitting with the ulama and taking knowledge from them and sitting in gathers. It's, 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 it's recommended. Uh, it's good. To honor. Huh? Naam. Number two. Al hirsu to strive. Ala murafaqatil ulama. To strive to befriend the people of knowledge and to follow them fi in their, in their in their travelings and their movements. If you hear scholars going around, go with him. Have a with him. Benefit from him. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm going to go, I'm going to give a talk. I'm going to go to this country, I'm going to... I'm, Sheikh, I'm, I'm yours, I'm all yours. I'm travelling with you, definitely. Uh, to benefit from his journey there. And when he goes there, you're going to see something you can benefit from. To, he's through the way, you can ask him as much questions as you want. To strive to that, as Abu Huraira was. Three, الحث على استئذان عند الخروج من المجلس أو المكان أو المرافق. Also, the, to take permission. Uh, that when you will leave a gathering, don't you walk out, or a place. That the manner is that the person takes permission. So, Sheikh, I'm just going to walk out, inshallah. I'm going. Or you're sitting with somebody, by says, Sheikh, you know, I need to go. Asking permission. It's a good manners, very good manners. Four. جواز الخروج إلى الشارع والأماكن وهو جنب. The permissibility of walking out on the road in a state of janaba. It is permissible. That the person doesn't have to be on purity every time. Doesn't have to. It's recommended, it's good, but it's not good. Also, والسلام, and also you can give greetings to people and you are allowed to come to gatherings of knowledge yeah, and other matters in a state which you're not pure. Even though it is khilafu al Even though it goes against what was better, the, the better part. You've missed out a lot. Five, tabihu al That the scholar, he alerts, he brings to the attention of those who are with him, his students and those who are around him and those who follow him. Ala uh, al-akhta, the mistakes that come. Alati tasduru minhum, the mistakes that they do. Like the Prophet corrected Abu Hurairah to actually think that he was an impure person. And to bring to their attention to bring to the attention to the, of the student what is correct. Number six, الجنابة ليست نجاسة تحل البدن That the نجاسة, the جنابة, which is إنزال المني, sperm to come out, جنابة, is not something that, huh, that encompasses your whole body. It may happen to you, yes, you're impure, yes, but the, you're not dirty from your hands, or you're not dirty from your cheeks, or your face, or your head, or your neck, or your, your stomach, you're not. That's why the man can hug his wife while she's on Jalaba. Ah. Number eight, uh, seven. You, you, you don't say to a believer, Inna hu najas. You're, 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 you're najas. You don't say. Because the mu'min does not become impure. Eight. Jawazu ta'ajjubi bi subhanallah. That when you're amazed with something, some people say, Holy moly, shmoly. Ah, when they get ta'ajjub, huh? So what do you say? Subhanallah. Exalted is Allah. Allahu Akbar. You get shocked with something that a person does. 
This is when you're amazed and you're ta'ajjub, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Those words, you see, that you, subhanallah, some people say the F word or the B word or whatever this. And then imagine if they were in a car crash and that was the last word that came out of their mouth. How dangerous it is. So a person, last minute, subhanallah, if he says, la ilaha illallah, you see how? And that could be the last moment of your life, something happens to you, you die upon good, inshallah. Number nine, المؤمن طاهر حيا كان أمية that the believer is pure whether he's alive or dead. Because the hadith shows إن المؤمن لا يجوز that the believer does not become impure, dead or alive doesn't matter. Number ten, دليل على طهارة عرق المسلم ولعابه ومخاطه ولو كان جنوما that the Muslim this is evidence that the the believer sweat. The believer sweat or his saliva is pure even if he's what. He's a janaba. So it doesn't mean if he drinks something and he's on janaba, nah, bro, he's impure. Take it. Get it. Get it. Because remember, the reason why that would be a, pos uh, a reason that some people may think is because why? Why would they think that? Because there are many, something that comes out of your body, saliva and sweat, something that comes out of your body, they might think to themselves that this is also impure. Nah, some people do believe that. 11. مشروعيه استئذان التابع للمتبوع في الانصراف وذلك أن الاستئذان من حسن الأدب والتربية. We mentioned that. Taking the legislation of taking uh, permission to leave. We mentioned that. Number 11. Uh, which is the legislation of taking permission of the person who is with an individual uh, when he wants to leave. And that is from good manners. Number 12. جواز التأخير الغسل من الجنابة. The permissibility of delaying uh, your ghusl. We also mentioned that in a different way. Number 13. The permissibility, uh, that it's also high, that it's, it's, it's permissible, that the person can talk about, uh, the person can talk about, ab about himself, something that which normally people would be shy of to talk about, for a masraha, for a reason. Yeah? Like Abu Huraira mentioning that he's not in Janaba, uh, but he told it, Lila mas lil maslaha, because there was a good in it for the Prophet to know, and that the Prophet doesn't think he just left him like that. Told him, alayhi salatu wasalam, now. Um, 14. عناية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأصحابه The Prophet's concern عليه الصلاة والسلام to his companions and that he looked for them. Where's the, where's the Buraira? Humble عليه الصلاة والسلام. How he was. 15 is that the disbeliever is a najis, impure. Ah. He, the, the, the disbeliever is impure. Why? Because his impurity is not a, uh, it's ma'nawi. It is the fact that his aqeed and his belief makes him impure. His aqeed. And his khubth aqeedah, his evil, filthy aqeedah, is what makes this individual. Um, number 17, 16, that the Prophet ﷺ doesn't know the unseen. He didn't even know why Abu Hurairah left him. He didn't know, he asked him, why, 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 why did, why, why, why is Abu Hurairah gone? Why did he leave? 